it's a project boat. I don't think she's she's been given the the loving care that you really should give these boats. I think this boat has been raced very heavily. This boat would be great for another young enterprising couple. Hi there, this is Captain Q and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. Hey, Randy. Uh, how are you, buddy? Listen, <laughs> I just flew in on our corporate uh, uh, mm, tri-pacer, whatever this is. It's not really a tri-pacer, but um, and landed. I'm just checking out the the various fins and. Uh, this is a new kind of rudder for you. It, it is a new kind of rudder. Looks like it could be a Concordia based on. Uh, the stars. Yes, you like that star, don't you? I do. That star is, is a, a unique uh, logo for sailboats. Some of the nicest built sailboats in in America. Today we're really going to look at a cool boat and uh, a hell of a deal. Sparkman Stevens, right? Ooh, Sparkman Stevens uh, were sort of the the leaders of going from the CCA design to the IOR design. The Cal 40s got invented, they put a fin keel on it, spade rudder, flat bottom, and they went out and they won Bermuda races and Transpacks and all that. Uh, a gentleman named uh, Charlie Britton started the Tartan Company, Tartan Marine, back in the 1960s. Went to Sparkman Stevens and said, give us an IOR boat. So s and designed an IOR race boat. Back in those days, they weren't like they are today. Today, they're skimmed out, they're pipe bursts, they're, there's nothing. And I think we're gonna see in this boat maybe something a little more cruisable. This is a Tartan 41, built in 1973. The very first few boats, uh, five, six, or seven boats, uh, were a little squirrely going downwind, so s and redesigned the keel and added an extra slug of lead to it, and then they fiddled with the rudder and they dropped the, the, the draft about seven inches or so. Dropped 70. it as in made it longer or? They made it deeper, yeah. seven, about yeah. seven inches deeper and 700 pounds heavier. Yeah. And, and so some reports say that they fiddled with the rudder a little bit, maybe made it a little deeper. In 1974, they started building boats with a new keel design completely. Uh, and they also reissued new keel that would fit the bolt pattern of the older boats. Come on, let's go take a look at this girl. Uh, she's pretty slick looking. And uh, remember, this is a race boat we're looking at that people are gonna really enjoy. There she is. What do you think? Oh yeah, racy. Is, is, that, is that slick or what? Now, this was current typical SNS design for the early 70s period. Uh, a fairly deep forefoot, uh, the bilges aren't totally slack, but they've been sucked up a little bit. A fin keel, uh, kind of a shark fin look when you see it from the side. And then uh, a nice broad space and moving the rudder way aft in front of a uh, great big skeg there. So is this one of the later models with the rudder aft? Uh, no, no, they didn't move the rudder on the boat. I think they just made it deeper, possibly. Oh, gotcha and possibly increase the size a little bit, if they did anything, and there's still some question about that. Sparkman Stevens boats are always fun to sail, and they're well balanced, and uh, you just have a good time with it. And if you do want to do a little club racing, boy, hoist the sails up and, and go at it and have some fun. It kind of reminds me of another uh, Sparkman and Stevens. Possibly the Yankee 38. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All in the same period, Yankee 38 and so forth. And also, this was in answer to Charlie Britton's request to try and compete with the Nautor boats, the Swans that were starting to come over about the same time. Some angles here, you'll see uh, our good old friend Mr. Tumblehome take place here. And there's a good bunch of it. And again, as we said, even just aesthetically, there's something kind of nice about having this, uh, this bit of Tumblehome to the boat. Although it was part of the IOR package. And strangely enough, the IOR penalized stability. So that's why they had these narrow water lines down here. Uh, because the broader the water line, the more stable the boat was going to be. So they tucked them in and you got this tumble home effect to give you still volume in the boat. There's 9,000 pounds of lead sitting down here. And that'll keep you upright for sure. Uh, I think the boat's been out of the water now for three years. And uh, she was sailed right up until the time she came out of the water. Uh, everything was sort of working at that point. You can see the, the uh, line on the keel here. Uh, 
and there is a, a line of demarcation a little bit which is not unusual because you've got two different surfaces of two different materials mating. You're saying it's just kind of a fatigue crack? I, I'm not even going to call it a crack. I, I just a, just a, an opening and maybe some of the original uh, bonding that was in there. So would you take this, grind that down, and put a new layer of glass over that? No, I don't think I'd, I, I'd, I'd grind it down and see what it looks like first of all, and then make yeah. a decision. I don't think it's glass worthy. I don't think it's leaking from that. Maybe some uh, ep epoxy with filler. Yeah. You, you, might, you might route it out and put something in there. But the first thing I want to do, though, is blast the bottom here. I didn't see any signs of severe grounding. So anybody that might say, oh, that line there is from grounding the boat. Uh, You'd probably see a chunk out of that, that leading edge. Yeah, uh, It's all lead, yeah, yeah. You're going to see something possibly standing here right now. I like what I see. This is about the only non-flush uh, through-hull fitting. Every other fitting is flush to the hull. Yeah, I noticed they're kind of countersunk, right? Well, this particular one is. Uh, but that's better than being upsunk. Yeah. <laughs> and if we look on the other side, you will see uh, that they're all very flush there. Right in the water line here. Oh uh, yeah, that's nice and flush. See, that's as flush as can be. So anything that's not going to disturb the water is what they wanted. She has the uh, typical for the period Martek folding prop here. The duck, duck bills that was somewhat referred to sometimes. And that will, will spin and then you can lock it up inside the boat somewhere and keep it upright or whatever. But the water pressure, once the engine's turned off, will brush by like so. The shaft's coming down out of the hull into the cutlass bearing here. And that, I'm not getting any wiggle out of that particularly. And we do have a zinc here that's had a couple of bites from the, uh, uh, the, the sea, but not much. PB, we, we made that up a major effort on the boat yep. to have the slickest, smoothest bottom all the time. A lot of diving over the side, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Coming further aft, it's interesting here to look up uh, and see how SNS has tried to extend the water line of the boat with this little extension of the water line itself to smooth out the wake and also give you a little ounce more of speed. We've got a nice heavy duty gudgeon here. I don't see any signs of any particular issues offhand. Uh, and I can't, this this rudder is massive. She's hollow, solid. This hull, uh, Randy, while you're looking at the transom right now, uh, they use the same mold for a Tartan 42 and a Tartan 43, which were basically just extensions of this counter uh, to the boat and the transom. Uh, and this, I believe, is still the original 41 hull complete but on those other ones they just took the same hull mold and added a little extra length to it. I'm ready to go topside. Yeah, what do you think? Let's do it. Come on everybody. Let's take a look around the cockpit. She's got four large aluminum variant winches. A set of 32s and 28s. Uh, Good beefy cleats for it. These are not self-tailing. Notice the cockpit narrows because you've got the narrow stern of the IOR design period. But it's also a deep cockpit, big deep uh, combings here on either side. And uh, there's little openings there to store stuff. I'm sitting uh, on the companionway to get below, uh, but my feet are on a bridge deck. And the bridge deck tells me a couple of things. One, uh, there's probably some sort of micro cabin back here. Uh, and more than just a uh, cruising aft cabin. It's really set up to be able to get a couple crews weight further aft. And you'll see when we go below that the motor is going to be just about dead center in this boat. A nice wheel installation there. A nice tight cockpit. Uh, I'd sit there right now except uh, my <laughs> there's a couple of puddles there. Uh, there's storage uh, underneath that locker for propane. There's a nice seat behind the helmsman uh, that's teak and it's just a lazarette. It's the only locker up here in the cockpit where you can store bumpers and dock lines. You'll find an engine control panel in there as well. You see the throttle controls, it's a big black knob, and then the uh, gear shift. Right next to that we all know what that rubber gasket is containing, right? As your helmsman bilge pump bicep builder. Exactly. On either side of the uh, cockpit here you'll see uh, flush mounted compasses so that the helmsman sitting about where your red foot is can keep an eye on the Genoa and, uh, and, and steer the boat on course. And he has the same thing on the starboard side as well where your green foot is. It's a set of turning blocks right at the last part of the uh, rail there for 
a spinnaker and probably as a double and that would also bring a, a line back to your Genoa sheet. Also right by your knees Randy there's a nice hydraulic backstay adjuster that has a separate control. Is there a handle on the back of that by the way? There isn't but no exterior handle that's replumbed someplace and uh, we'd have to trace that out notice there's a nice uh i think richie compass is it uh and uh a, a edson steering wheel and brace uh, and a couple of open holders for instruments so the helmsman back here not very far away about six feet away can read uh the ray marine uh, uh multitasking uh, gauge right here and there's also a data marine depth sounder and that's nice it's got a nice big lit face to it so you'll be able to read that easily uh, also on the other side we have another ray marine apparent wind indicator and right next to that is an, a really old canyon knot meter and i guess just in case there's an issue they have a <laughs> panic button a panic button i think you've hit that a few times uh, <laughs> yeah i'm not certain what happens on this boat when you hit it but uh should we find out uh i can try it let's see uh, nothing happens at all ah! i think that just <laughs> that just makes the crew feel good got a couple of hatches here for some uh, air down that's going to be over the galley and over the nav station I'm thinking here's a couple of, of racks that usually takes up a life raft back then they like to get the winches off the mast to save weight so you jump the line meaning you reach up and grab it and pull it down and then somebody else tails it around a winch or you run it back uh, through one of these these uh, block fair leads uh, look at the inboard track for sheeting the Genoa's on that seven degree line. And of course it has the aluminum tow rail. A couple of derailed vents here. These are basics, uh, just add on pieces that will get some air down in, into the cabin as much as you can. And these little translucent things right here that we see, just a line to put, <laughs> this is always something you need up here, our uh, sail ties. What they would do on these boats, they would put a uh, full set of shrouds that would go right to the masthead through uh, two sets of spreaders and then there'd be another ch uh, chain plate down there for a single lower when they tighten up on the backstay that's going to take your mast to like so and it's going to bend it backwards right but what happens when you do that yeah. this bows the center of the mast forward you want to keep that in control so you've got a little little baby stay that comes right down here uh, to this tang coming up just forward of the deck combing there. Uh, you'll see a long track up the center of the deck which again is going to allow you to adjust a staysail tack uh, or a blooper tack set up under a spinnaker. I don't think we've mentioned a blooper before. Well a blooper is a big funny sail. It's a uh, it's kind of a weird cut. It's sort of triangular. It's very full. It's made out of nylon usually and they were set in the old racing days you'd have a, a the big spinnaker up to we'll say to starboard in this instance and then with a separate halyard you would raise the blooper to port and uh, uh, take all that air so th so no air got by the boat at all let me just point out the spinnaker pole look at the size of that puppy this is a big four triangle on this boat that plug the spinnaker pole will slide into that for storage but then when you go racing it's going to have a similar plug for it on the mast. Four square feet of hatch up here in the forward four peak. We'll see that one below. Just that little piece of glass. It's a triangular shaped prism and uh, it sheds an enormous amount of light in there. A nice clean foredeck. It's slightly cambered. Not much, but slightly cambered for strength and also give you a little better footing on the high side when you're carrying and working sails. So what do you say? It's about Is that it time? time. It's that time. Okay, let's skate back. <laughs> down pal oh thanks oh dear oh boy uh, I'm <laughs> I was hoping for a little bit more down here it's really sad because it's a nice design you know and she's just a little bit bigger than the Yankee 38 that we saw yep and that was so minimalized and even though it was clean and tidy and neat uh, it just didn't have enough furniture to make it cruisable now we're down here in a main saloon that has Two pilot berths, big pilot berths. Remember, we got a lot of beam on this boat. What did we say, 12, five or something like that? Yeah. And um, I've got two, uh, I've got a pull out uh, berth on this side and the ability to uh, create a double here. 
And there's two more berths forward, our, our old V berth up there, Mr. V. And behind us, if you were to spin around there, you'd see uh, two quarter berths in a micro cabin, I'm going to call it, that even has a little seat in the center. Now look at the chart table. Uh, unfortunately, we can't even get into it because the main boom is lying uh, there. And there's a ton of, of materials and so forth uh, relating to navigation tools, spare parts, a battery, uh, an extra battery switch. I'll throw this one out to our, our, our viewers. Uh, yeah, let's have a little contest here. <laughs> here's, here's something we found on board here, and I cannot figure out where this goes. It may, it may go on a base like that and rotate, possibly, but I don't know what's going to sit in there. But it has a gear on here that's bolted. So if it's bolted, then some, something's going to turn that gear one way or the other. Maybe it's related to a radar unit, but we're told there's no radar on the boat. But So if our viewers would write in and tell us what we have here, we're, we're mildly good. curious. What does the uh, right answer get? Well, I think no. they should get a little merch. Uh, they should get merch. You like to get merch. We'll do merch. Here we've got big storage lockers on either side of me. Uh, there's three on each side and, 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 and tons of storage on the boat for uh, your gear. This is a, a water tank right here and there's a fuel tank right underneath uh, uh, your feet behind you uh, in the gallery underneath that grate. Uh, Let's see what we got. And that has oh, yeah. uh, the look of something that needs attention. <laughs> a little bit. It's just so sad when a boat gets wet like this inside and, and you see things like the, the headliners coming down. And uh, look at the two port lights beside you. They need repair, replacement, and the woodwork needs to be dealt with. She's going to have a nice big table right here that's going to come down, fold down, and articulate, and then give you seating for uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably your whole crew of six or eight people around this one table. There's a lot of headroom. And uh, the captain's still got a couple of inches on top of the beanie. And that's at the low point, too. And this is a low point where the cabin starts to slant down. So, Randy, we've got an old boat here with a lot of old fittings and things. And she was a beauty in her day. Tartan built a beautiful boat, a strong hull. There's never been any question about Tartan's building, uh, uh, build quality of their boats. And Sparkman Stevens, the design. So this, is, this was high tech in 1974, and anybody would have loved to have owned this boat. But she's been let go. And we're in the galley, nice little L-shaped galley. We have a three-burner propane stove right here. I don't think uh, I'd I don't think I'd open it if I were you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, you coward. Four and, and uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it. I think it's okay. And we have uh, uh, ice box here. I don't see signs of refrigeration. And you know what? Back then, they were still drinking that stuff. <laughs> Unbelievable. And you know, and of course, they had to be fed, oh. and uh, until they got fed up and switched to something else. This is all kind of bulky and a lot of things just don't work. I mean, they're, they're swollen shut. Underneath the nav station, there's a box here with batteries in it. And that's a, 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 a sort of interesting place for the batteries. One, it's gotten them out of the bilge. And right behind me, we have an engine room. Oh, Do you right. want to see a tiny engine room? In this little box? Yep, yep, yep. Oh. For a quick check, this is one of the original Westerbeek engines. I believe it's the 20 horse. 15 or 20 horsepower motor, which was considered undersized. But they put the small motor in there because the motor was really designed to do nothing more than uh, take you from your dock out to the race course. If you were to uh, buy this boat and take it cruising, would you upgrade that or would you maybe go electric? First of all, I'd find out if it's working because Really, you, you don't need more. If you are going to try and motor down the intercoastal waterway and do that sort of thing, you might want to put a bigger engine in, or at least a bigger fuel tank. I don't think I'd change it right away, unless yeah. it didn't work. I am now back in the micro cabin, as I called it before. Um, there's a little bench seat here, which is nice. You can sit down and put on your boots and shoes. And there are two good-sized quarter berths. Sadly, today, they're totally covered with gear. Uh, I'm sitting on the head of one. And there are, are a couple of uh, port lights in here to give you a sense of, uh, uh, of light and air that can be opened up. I've seen pictures of these boats in, in, in apple pie condition, and they're really neat below. And the woodwork is beautiful, and uh, though not extensive, and the 
uh, accommodations are, are really cruiseworthy, really nice looking boats. This boat is, has been beaten. Oh, by the way, you know what I have here? Ah. What do you think? That's your hydraulic backstay pump. It is. It's really an unusual position for it. Uh, Just in uh, case you have a bad dream and you want to crank it up, <laughs> yeah, it's right yeah. there. Let's take a look forward. I think we have a nice yeah. head on this boat. You know, as we've noticed, uh, the headliner here is, is really iffy in a lot of places and probably ought to all come down. Uh, there's some, you know, storage cabinets and, and the like. We have a nice collection of, of winch handles. I do notice the, uh, the chain plates. Look at those. I'm, I'm very pleased with what I see there. All bright, shiny, no signs of, of particular rust or anything. Lots of, you know, some drawer spaces here. Uh, not a ton of these, but enough to, you know, for most, for most of your crew. Hey, Randy! Yeah. <laughs> Can I have any pri <coughs> privacy on this boat? No rest for the I weary. I guess not. Uh, look what the Sparkman Stevens did. They put that head the right direction, four and a half. We like that. And uh, there's a shower here, and here's your shower. You can shower, you can sit. You've got a nice a grate down here that's going to collect water that's going to go down to a nice sump pump, uh, very much like what I think you just installed on uh, some boat you know about. Yeah. Uh, storage. Uh, we're going to need more cleaning agents here. You know what this reminds me a little bit of, too? Uh, you remember the CNC 41 that we yep. saw in Madden uh, Poisson, yep. I think yep. it was? It was, yeah. And that's been purchased, and they're working on that boat. And uh, those people would not have been afraid of this boat either. I see a, a problem here. Yeah, you know, what's the problem? Oh, <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> it's a ridiculously small mirror. I mean, wow. it, it just gets my cheer. In my Maybe if you're chin. racing hardcore and you don't want to take a... You're too... Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't even gimbal. Before we step off the boat, there's just one other thing I want to put out to our viewers. And um, I have a quiz for them. I'm going to ask people if they know what this particular thing is right here. So we have two quizzes today? Yeah, two quizzes. But this is a really an important one. This is really an important one. Oh. Uh, what do you think this is? I think it's for the captain to yell th at the crew through. Yeah, oh, a, a loud, it could be a loudspeaker. A I could just sit down here yeah. and bull, megahorn. Bull, bullhorn, yeah. Except it goes the wrong way, so I'd be yelling at myself, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think that is? I don't know. I, I, I know exactly what it is. It makes me very happy to see this thing, and I'll explain why somewhere yeah. down the pike. But uh, I hope we hear from our fans. I think this boat has been raced very heavily. I don't think she's she's been given the the loving care that you really should give these boats. It's a project boat. There's still a possibility of life. Now, this boat would be great for another young enterprising couple uh, who ideally, if you could, really be ideal for somebody that had a warm barn. I want to get this boat right into a warm barn as soon as possible, get her dried out, and then start peeling away you know, the things that need to be peeled away. I think I'd strip out most of the interior. Uh, the overheads all have to go. There are a lot of parts and spare things sitting on the boat, so I think if you took your time and, and, and checked them all out and see where they went, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd save a lot of money. Uh, the spars, we are told, uh, are in good condition. We've got to give this a rating. Uh, I, I rest assured that this boat will float. She was floating just before she came out of the water three years ago, and she's been sitting on the hard, and she's been ignored for three years, but I believe she will float. Uh, so she gets a 10. It's a questionable 10. No port lights. <laughs> <laughs> you take any water. Uh... I'm giving her a 10, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, I'm going to give her a couple of points for Sparkman Stevens' design, and... Uh, maybe two more points for an interesting project for somebody. So, 14 for the Tartan 41, living near the woods in Lemington, Maine. Good Thanks tip. for watching. Good luck to you. <laughs>